now my first web app DB has been created by Toad and I can actually right click in here and say refresh and then see and da, 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 where is it my first web app DB is here there's no um, no data or no tables inside of the database yet uh, but that's okay because they will get created when we launch our application so let's stop and restart the server so now we specify the database the database exists it should realize that it exists now and it should fire up the the web application properly and when it fires up the web application it's actually spring Roo, we've configured it so that it's using the um, hibernate framework um, and the hibernate framework will actually create the tables for us so now if we go back in here and say refresh look at that it's created a users table for us with an ID email password username and version column how sweet is that we didn't have to do anything with SQL we didn't have to know any SQL code whatsoever and it's created a table for us in our database with all the appropriate things and if we inspect this stuff like if I click double click on users um, you see that email is nullable right it, you're, you can have a null value for email but you cannot have a null value for password you cannot have a null value for username and username is unique so this stuff all comes from this stuff here that we typed in when we were doing the roo configuration not null and this one says unique equal to true and you see email doesn't have any annotation above it so it's allowed to be uh, email is allowed to be null and the um, it's it doesn't it can be it can not be unique so that's really cool um, love the stuff it helps you so much even from a conceptual level just to understand how this stuff all ties together with the uh, the SQL itself is, is great um, so now it's it, the server started and if you want to I think you can double click on the server here if you double click on it it should tell you um, if I scroll down the port that it's set up for um, its bio HTTP port which is bio HTTP port here is 8080 so 8080 is the port that we want to connect to and localhost is the name um, that we need to type in here to connect to Tomcat and the port is colon 8080 so if we just hit enter enter there you'll see a, a basic Tomcat screen um, this is just a, a basic um, sort of a I guess a, almost like a management console for your Tomcat um, but I don't want that I want to go to slash my first web app okay now this is what I was talking about the my first web app has to be exactly the same as your project name over here um, I believe even uh, as far as the case as well matters so if we say enter <coughs> it will launch our application so this is at this is the um, this has been generated by spring Roo, uh for us and we can actually go and say look at this users so users is the name of our um, domain object that we created our entity and because that exists and because we said um, we had typed in our Roo shell um, web MVC all and we specified a package now there are controllers that have been created so that you can actually click on create new user and when I first it calls it it wanted to call it users but because um, user it's already called users it puts an ES on the end just as a you know catch-all just in case if uh, your um, whatchamacallit your domain object ends with an S it just puts ES so it's not actually an English word, but you know, I guess you can bear with the Spring people. They, you know, they're trying to do their best for uh, you know in handling all situations. So if I just named it user, um, then I think it would have created a user's um, path for the actual um, the path for the actual URL. But because it ends with S and it needs ES, so anyway. Um, if I say create new users then there you go it goes to this form and I can actually type in a username look at this isn't this neat all this there's there's validation because says hey this is required um, and this is required because we said 
it's not nullable. So because it's not nullable, it, it's it's yellow here and it's saying it, we need it. But if I click on email, this is nullable, so it's okay to have no value, so there's no validation there. That's so cool. So um, I can type in a username, so my username is, I don't know, tpage. My password is test123. My email is tpage at ecosim.ca. Save. Boom. So it's actually, if I now say list my users, that user now exists. And if I go to my um, toad here and I say new editor, and I actually um, type in some SQL code, select star from users table. Uh, actually, I don't need the uh, semicolon. It actually exists. Look at this. It's actually inserted a row into my database, into the users table, with the email, the password, the username, as well as the unique identifier for the row, and a version number. This is all already handled through the web application that we just created. And there it is. So if we actually go in and we can say update the user, let's say I want to change my password to 124 and say save. Now we go back to my database and refresh. Now it's 134 and the version has been updated because I made a change to the row. So it's all handled. This, this, is, this is version control stuff, which is very cool. Um, it, it's a, a situation where it handles multiple people accessing the same data at the same time. Um, and kind of gives warnings if someone is modifying data that has already been changed. Um, an advanced concept, but it's built in, and it's it's fantastic. I, I, I can't stress enough how cool this is, because this is a great starting point for your application, um, and, and you can just take it now, and you can run with it. Everything is set up. Like, just, just getting to this point, you know, ladies and gentlemen, is so much work if you weren't using the Spring Roo uh, code generation stuff. It is so much work to set up all these files to get to the point where you can actually type in localhost 8080 and type in the name of your application and say enter and actually have it display something and actually be able to have it interface with your database here. Like it makes it look so easy, but I, I mean, I, like I said, I've been in the business for probably five years or six years now. And, and I've done this before, this is painful stuff. And, and it makes it so easy, and I love it. So, that's a fantastic um, introduction for using Spring Roo to create your very first web application. And, uh, and you, it's, it's what I do now all the time when I create um, any web applications for, if I have any contracts on the side, um, whenever I build web applications for friends or for family or for a client, um, this is exactly the process that I use to start um, my web application. And, and from here, all I do is I go and I, I, I don't want to actually build a web application that looks like this. And this is the presentation layer, um, which I've talked about in my ebook. Um, the presentation layer has this, this is just a JSP page. Um, and the JSP has all this, you know, Spring Roo stuff on it. So I actually just strip out, um, get rid of all this, um, let's call it crap for now. It's not crap, but I like to call it crap. And um, and then put in my own uh, view so that it looks just like my client would want it to look. Um, so awesome stuff. So I hope that's been very helpful and very informative. And, uh, and there's plenty of stuff to delve into here to talk about. Um, but I will leave that for another day. Okay? Take care, everyone.